Greetings, webheads. My name is Dominic, and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I prepared a quick little video for all of you that I'm going to be calling Five Underrated Spider-Man Marvel Omnibuses. These might not be the go-to number one Spider-Man comic recommendations that everyone's giving you, but I still think that these are really fun entries into this character's long-running mythos. Before we jump into the list though, I do want to just shout out our channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. If you're looking to pick up your own comic book collected editions, I highly encourage you to check out their website. You can find a link for it in this video's description, and if you see something you like, you can even use my discount code at checkout, The Comic Book Report, to receive $2 off of your order. Please note if you use my affiliate link or code to make a purchase, I will earn a small commission, but it's a fantastic way to support this channel. Thank you so much for considering, now let's get started with today's Spider-Man list. In no particular order, we're going to be starting today with The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2 from Marvel Comics. This collects, I believe, around issue 39 through somewhere in the high 60s, a few annuals and things like that. But wow, why am I bringing up this omnibus? Why am I calling it underrated? Because I think that when some people go back to the Silver Age and try to collect some of Spider-Man, obviously everyone wants to get the Volume 1, and with good reason. Right from the jump, Spider-Man is a great title, and honestly, the Volume Volume 1 has not only his origin, but the origin of so many of the main supporting characters, rogues gallery of villains, and much more. But here's where the underrated aspect of Volume 2 comes in. We still have a lot of great character introductions in this volume, and this is where Spider-Man begins to really hit even more of a stride. By this point in the comic book tenure, we've had Spider-Man ongoing for a few years now, so many of the character voices are so much more grounded and developed, and some of the intrigue, it's just fantastic. Yes, the comics are still dated, yes, this is still deeply entrenched in that Silver Age of comics, but to me it's part of that top tier upper echelon of Silver Age books. This is a definite underrated collection for me. I think that some people might just get one volume into the Silver Age, but let me assure you, this whole catalog of Spider-Man, especially all of these early Silver Age books, are all fantastic reads, or dare I say, amazing. Yes, wink wink, love the amazing Spider-Man. Looking at the art as well, it's really clear the artists attached to this book have really found their footing. This is just great classic Spider-Man era. What's fun about this book, too, is we also have a lot of returning appearances from, again, a lot of the supporting cast of characters, but also a lot of these notable villains. We don't just have the first outing of the character, we have them coming back for rematches. This is a really good book that I think, in my mind, really just began to kick Spider-Man into an even higher gear. Some classic storylines in this collection as well, and overall, I just do think that this collection is underrated, and I think there's a whole batch of modern comic book readers that would do themselves a favor to go back and read some Silver Age greatest hits. And I would definitely include this omnibus on that list. I mean, even looking at here, the Lizard, this is one of my prime examples of great Spider-Man villains. Talk about an underrated aspect of Spider-Man. I think the Lizard is a fantastic Spider-Man villain. In fact, he's one of my all-time favorites. The tragic story of Dr. Kurt Connors, or Professor Kurt Connors, turning himself into the Lizard after trying to replace his arm. It's just a really amazing story. And all of these interactions, this is just one small example of what this omnibus has to offer. I think this whole run is great. I have all five of these amazing Spider-Man omnibuses that they've released so far. And Volume 2 is, again, one I think gets passed over, but one I think so many people should go invest and check out. Hopefully this gets a reprint soon for all of you that hope to collect it while it's in print. But for me, I look at it on the collection and just think I'm so thankful for it. Definitely don't miss The Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 2. Next on our list of underrated Spider-Man omnibuses, look no further than The Amazing Spider-Man by Nick Spencer, Ryan Otley, and Umberto Ramos Omnibus Volume 1. Admittedly, this is a much more modern Spider-Man run, and it's one I'm actually still making my way through. And yet, even with how far I'm in at this point, I still feel comfortable recommending this as a great omnibus. 
I really like Nick Spencer. I've enjoyed this writer ever since I read him on Morning Glories, an image comic series that's still on hiatus at the time of this recording. Please come back, Nick Spencer. I want to finish that run. Anyway, I've come to really enjoy this writer in more series than just that. I even enjoyed his run on Captain America I read kind of recently. Anyway, Spider-Man is one of my favorite characters. When I heard he was attached to it and that he was throwing back to a lot of the beloved eras of Spider-Man and how he approached the storytelling, I was engaged from moment one. And to team him up with Ryan Otley of Invincible fame, this just felt like a no-brainer. And so far reading through this, I feel that way. I feel like this is just absolutely incredible. And I feel like this run got a lot of credit at the beginning, and by the end, people just really weren't fans of it as much, just as a general consensus. I know it has its diehard fans. I have a feeling I might be one of them by the time I'm done. But I do think that this is an underrated book. I think that a lot of people were excited for this, but since I have I haven't heard a lot of people discuss it, and I think it's a great book. Even for the art alone, I mean, Ryan Otley on Spider-Man, this just works. The colors jump off the page, and everything is so engaging. And unlike my Silver Age example from the previous entry, this is modern comic book storytelling. We have much more modern pacing and story arcs and character mechanics, and so if you're looking for a good Spider-Man read but don't want to get into the older school comics, this might be a great book for you. I really I really, really love Spencer's approach to Spider-Man so far. There's a kind of levity, even in the midst of a lot of just deep, intense character moments, and I just think he really understands Spider-Man. And granted, I haven't finished this run in its entirety, so please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about this, but I think that there's a lot of core Spider-Man elements and what's needed for a really good Spider-Man story that Spencer just seems to understand. The character feels like Peter Parker to me, the supporting cast feels like their respective characters, and everything just works. I love the villains he's introducing so far, and wow, this book just really, just it just gets it for me. I know Volume 2 is coming out later this year, again at the time of the recording, that finishes out this whole Spencer era of Spider-Man. I definitely hope to pre-order that when I can have it in the budget, but for now, I'm happily going to enjoy just trying to finish this one out. Such a fun run so far, and one I could recommend as something I feel like is generally a bit underrated. So far, this book is still much more of a hit than a miss for me. Don't miss out on Nick Spencer's Spider-Man. And hey, if you're watching this video and you've yet to subscribe to the channel, I just want to encourage you to do so. I'm always doing list videos like this, comic book reviews, hauls, unboxings, and more. Anyway, thank you for considering. Now on with the show. Alright, keeping this list moving right along, we're going to be talking about the Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane Omnibus from Marvel Comics. Yes, this is the adjectiveless Spider-Man. Just Spider-Man. Yes, yes, yes. So for those that don't know, Todd McFarlane is one of the premier comic book artists, arguably of all time, especially that 90s era of comic storytelling. He's also the creator of Spawn. For those that are, again, maybe just a little more unaware of who I'm talking about here, at any rate, he teamed up with David Michelini for an incredible run on Spider-Man. That's the run that introduced Venom. Really, really good stuff. I think that that is a really well-regarded, and with good reason, Spider-Man omnibus and period of time within the Spider-Man mythos. What's a little bit less popular is this Spider-Man run by just Todd McFarlane. This is when Todd McFarlane takes over not only illustrating, but also writing, inking, everything. This book, From Soup to Nuts, is all Todd McFarlane. I've gotten criticisms on this book saying the writing is just not there. Yes, it's beautiful to behold, but it doesn't have a lot of substance. And frankly, I think that that criticism is a bit unfair. Does the storytelling hold up as well as some of David Michelini's stuff? Maybe not, but are they still compelling reads, especially for what Todd McFarlane appears to be going for? Absolutely. This is a breezier, much smaller omnibus than a lot of the other Spider-Man books, especially in this list, but it packs a real punch. I read and reviewed this earlier on the channel, but one of the things I appreciate about Todd McFarlane's tenure on Spider-Man is that he brings a kind of light horror feel to a lot of the Spider-Man storytellings. In the first major story arc, we have a lot of these kind of primal, animalistic Spider-Man villains showing up and just becoming kind of grotesque, brutish, monstrous versions 
versions of themselves. I'm looking at you, Lizard. A really, really haunting tale to start the omnibus out. We also have a really eerie story with, like, Hobgoblin and Morbius. We have a fantastic story with the Wendigo and Wolverine, and so much more. Obviously, a real big selling point is the art by the incredible Todd McFarlane. He was given so much freedom in this book, and you can really tell with how he approaches the art style. He completely breaks out of the box as far as the paneling layout, and the way he does the webbing, that kind of spaghetti, noodling, everywhere webbing, it's just gorgeous. I think that this omnibus is worth it by far for the art alone, but I think especially if you're a fan of light horror in comics, this might be worth it for you in general. I think that this is a really fun and fascinating look at Spider-Man, especially for this period in his life. Really love this book, and I just think that a lot of people are a little too harsh on the writing and maybe miss out on what the vision Todd McFarlane was trying to bring to this character. I still don't think it's my favorite run, but I certainly feel comfortable enough saying that this is an underrated Spider-Man run. Definitely don't miss out on Spider-Man by Todd McFarlane. Next up, we have the Spider-Man Clone Saga Omnibus Volume 1. Really excited to finally have this in the collection. They're reprinting all of these volumes, the Ben Riley volumes, at the time of this recording. I think it started in late 2023, and it's going through early 2024. Anyway, all four volumes that collect this time for the modern Clone Saga from the 90s, it's all coming out again in reprinted omnibuses. And this is another much maligned era in Spider-Man's history history. So many people bag on and just hate the Clone Saga, but I am an unapologetic fan. Is it a bit bloated? Certainly. Can it be a little bit cheeky? Yes. But is it great? Oh man, it's so much fun. I really love Ben Riley, the clone Spider-Man, particularly in the kind of red suit, blue hoodie kind of early costume. The later, more legitimate costume is also fine as well, but I'm never going to get over that blue hoodie. I just love that look. It just works for me. And this is just 90s comics at its most fun. The art is just getting just ridiculously bombastic, but somehow it's still more grounded than some of the other books I've seen around this time. And I just really like the stories. This omnibus is what kicks off this whole era in the Clone Saga and Ben Riley Saga, and I think that this volume might be one of the strongest I've had the pleasure of reading. I think that this is underrated because it's become almost a cult hit. Like, I think that there's a faction of people that really just root for this saga, but in general, I still hear a lot of negative comments about this time on Spider-Man. And I'm not saying those arguments aren't valid, I'm just saying I don't share that same opinion. And there might be many of you that are on the fence about this book that might not share it as well. All I know is that they're reprinting these omnibuses because people want them. People like myself. So not everyone can be hating on the Clone Saga. I do think it's an underrated time. I think that its biggest crime was that it went on a bit too long, and some of the tight kind of ideas and storytellings maybe got a bit, again, just kind of bloated or overlong. But it was still fun. I think if you're a fan of Spider-Man, why wouldn't you want more Spider-Man? It just works for me. And I think Ben Riley was similar enough to feel great, but different enough to be compelling. I really love everything he brought to Spider-Man's lore, and I think all of the other twists and turns in the Clone Saga, well, honestly, it just kept me riveted. There's intrigue, there's mystery, there's a what's really going on here, what's the truth aspect to it all, and it just, honestly, I, it gets me. I, it just gets me. I really have a soft spot for the Clone Saga, and finally having this first omnibus in my collection, I'm just ecstatic. I used to have the just giant fat paperbacks that collected all of these and that Ben Riley saga back in the day. I sold it all, and wow, I could have just dreamed about a day when they reprinted these omnibuses again. Anyway, I do think it's an underrated time in Spider-Man's history. No, it's not for everyone, but it's certainly for me, and it may just be for you as well. Don't miss out on Spider-Man's Clone Saga. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Spider-Man Beyond Omnibus from Marvel Comics. There are so many creators attached to this book, it's kind of radical that it feels cohesive. This book takes place after that Nick Spencer era on Spider-Man, and it has the return of the Ben Riley clone Spider-Man. That happens right in the first issue or two of this run, so it's not really a spoiler, but it's a fantastic book. Basically, Ben Riley, the clone Spider-Man, is kind of taking the mantle of Spider-Man again for a time, and he works for this corporation. It's a really fascinating setup, and honestly, it was one of the most refreshing takes to Spider-Man I've seen in some time. 
if Nick Spencer was trying to honor kind of the legacy and what really works for the character of Peter Parker, this Beyond era is really trying to push forward in a way that maybe not as groundbreaking as something like Superior Spider-Man, where we have Doc Ock in the body of Peter Parker being a new kind of Spider-Man, but in that same vein of just trying to do something a little bit new or novel, giving it back to the clone Spider-Man and having him working for this weird organization, it just was so fascinating to me. This is another smaller, tighter collection, but it is really well paced and just fun. I like seeing all the twists and turns with Ben Riley. I love seeing the differences between him and someone like Peter Parker. I thought the art in this collection was fantastic. Why I think this is underrated is because this book I feel like came and went. It was released I believe last year. There was a little bit of a buzz and then I feel like people just kind of stopped talking about it. I know some people were critical about the fact that we couldn't even get volume 2 of Nick Spencer's run before getting this. Some people were maybe saving up to finish that before they go here or do I buy it first and then just have it on a shelf and I don't know if I made a poor decision but I decided to read this before finishing out Nick Spencer and honestly I really like it I think it was really good to just jump in I don't really feel too lost or anything like that it's really kind of establishing its own status quo for the period of this run and I just think it works well like I said the art is really gripping for me I think that this is a really fun modern approach to a Spider-Man narrative and I think that this again might have an audience that just hasn't found it yet I'm not sure if this book is still in print but if it is it might be worth pursuing honestly it's kind of fun there's also a really great Craven the Hunter story in here that is really fascinating as well. I think that that's a really great Spider-Man villain that is sometimes underutilized, and I really love seeing him show up here, love seeing the clone spider show up, loving learning about this new Beyond Corporation. We even had great supporting characters like Misty Knight and Colleen Wing show up. How fun! There's such an eclectic mix of Marvel characters in this book. Again, it just kind of worked for me. This is definitely a great example of an underrated Spider-Man omnibus in my mind. It might not ever be on someone's like top five Spider-Man omnibus list, but it might still be on a list of, hey, this is still worth checking out. It's still worth your time, and it's really a fun twist on a standard Spider-Man story arc. Okay, and that's already going to round out our five underrated Spider-Man Marvel Omnibus Edition video. Yeah, I'm just doing kind of a top five today, not the usual top ten, but I'd love to get your feedback in the comments below. Do you agree with my choices? Do you disagree wholeheartedly? Do you have other picks that you would put in this list? I'd love to hear all about it in the comments below. I hope I find other Spider-Man fans like myself. Thank you so much, so much, so much for watching. I'm still having such a blast making these list videos for all of you. Would love to hear your feedback on this topic or maybe if you have a recommendation of something you'd like to see on the channel i'd love to hear that too but until next time this has been the comic book report thank you so much again for watching don't forget to leave that like and maybe try to check out another video on your way out have a good one